As we enter into this time of generosity and giving during our worship service, I'd like for you to spend a few moments together sharing about the needs and possibilities for furthering Christ's mission in your congregation. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and turn to your neighbor and discuss together what ministries are made possible by sharing local ministries mission ties in your congregation. Now that you've been reminded of the blessings that come from local mission ties, let's consider the other half of the equation, worldwide mission ties. In 2009, and again in 2012, your contributions to worldwide mission ties provided the chance for me to travel to Africa in mission. Thank you for making those life-changing opportunities possible through your tithing contributions. Because we had limited luggage space, it wasn't possible for me to bring gifts for all the folks that we would meet and share with. But with the help of a talented assistant, we developed peel and stick labels with images of lion and lamb um, as described in Isaiah 11. So in every village, we were surrounded by children who were excited to see visitors. And we asked and received permission to put the stickers on the children's clothing. And the news quickly spread. Just as we'd finish a whole group of children and their stickers, a whole new wave of children would appear. And they would wait for the chance to have a sticker on their shirt. We shared with them the importance of the peace of Jesus Christ in the community of Christ and offered them a description of the peaceable reign of God where it is possible for the lion and the lamb to live peacefully together. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, we traveled into many rural areas and met many disciples committed to the mission of Jesus Christ. In one congregation, the pastor greeted us with a child on her hip and dozens of children surrounding her. The building we stood in had four walls. There was a tarp draped over part of the top of the structure, but it was inadequate to keep out the sun and other weather. The pastor motioned around the building and said, this is my congregation. And we nodded and we surveyed the building with our eyes. But then she became agitated and once again she motioned and said, this is my congregation. This time we realized she was pointing to the children not to the building. The children included those who were HIV AIDS orphans and many others. And she wanted us to understand that her mission field was ministering and caring for this congregation of children. Then she pointed overhead and said, when you get home, tell them we need a roof. As the sun began to set, an unexpected aspect of the gift we gave the children became apparent. We didn't know it, but the neon stickers were also glow in the dark. And while we were soon enveloped in darkness, the enthusiastic and bubbling presence of children around us continued. We could see the stickers in the dark. They became light to our darkness, and we were changed. Recently, the high priests of the church have spent time reflecting on generosity as a spiritual discipline. For a 16-day period, we received a daily email with scripture and thoughts for us to consider. I'd like to share one of the particularly powerful thoughts for me from that pilot program. Our generosity is not inspired by what others deserve, but what they need. We begin to see with God's grace how many lives are waiting for the redeeming power of our generosity. Our abundant generosity to achieve Christ's mission makes possible what otherwise seems impossible. The urgency for generous disciples fully devoted to the cause of Zion has never been greater. 
As we give today, may we feel that urgency and give tithing equally to local and worldwide ministries so that the mission of Jesus Christ is furthered in your community and communities around the world. Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, we are constantly in awe of your creation. Bless our giving that it might build roofs and change lives. We give all that we have and are to the mission of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.